Welcome to the meeting this morning for gas turbines and reciprocating engines. And it's a, a coverage of the Industrial Internet of Things empowered by the Industrial Internet of Wisdom and resulting in lots of remote uh, O&M. And the um, gas turbine rotating parts are already being uh, very um, extensively monitored. So it, it is a, uh, a path forward for IIoT, which has been taken. And so in many respects, it's a leading leading edge of the whole IIoT and particularly the remote O&M. There's a lot of uh, monitoring at some distance of what's going on in all the gas turbine plants. And I think this is going to be and extended to include all the GT, GTCC components. Uh, a number of third parties are already involved, and um, and they include even uh, and people like her who are on the uh, call with us today, Illuminant, who uh, is monitoring the rotating parts in all its own uh, utility plants, but also doing so for industry in the area. Uh, Southern Duke and others are also uh, involved in all of this. So the biggest uh, IoT revenue potential is large-scale power generation. But as a percentage of OPEX, or OPEX rather, the um, IIoT and remote monitoring for the smaller gas turbines and IC engines is a much bigger uh, part of the pie. And uh, this is because there's so many of them, and many of them are remote. So the ROI for IIoT and remote monitoring for compressor stations uh, in remote areas and offshore platforms is, is very, very high. Distributed generation with um, combined heat and power is going to be huge. And it has taken some people by surprise. But there are predictions that we're, for many reasons, going to be reverting to the style of generation that we had 100 years ago, where the largest generator was 100 uh, megawatts and serving the local area. And uh, remote monitoring services, such as offered by Illuminant, can be expanded to IIoT for the complete CHP system. And maybe we can get into that uh, a little bit later, but the uh, opportunity is certainly there for these relatively complex uh, ways to extract the uh, heat from the power generation and to use it beneficially. It's a big, big opportunity and one that's recognized by DOE who's putting a big program on it and certainly something that's uh, already far advanced in other countries of the world. So um, a big opportunity is the um, use of gas engines and turbines uh, to provide CO2 for indoor agriculture along with heat, heat and uh, light. And the bottom line is that if you increase the CO2 content from 400 parts per million to 600 parts per million, your plants are going to grow 40% uh, faster. And we, uh, we do have a deep dive for uh, Berkshire Hathaway, and they're growing 22 million pounds of tomatoes a year at the current uh, Creek plant. So let's move into the markets. The market opportunity in the gas turbine area is in the neighborhood of $100 billion a year just for service, replace, and repair around the world. And when you look at some of the individual components, uh, they're also sizable. Even, even valves alone is more than a billion dollars a year. And as far as the total market goes, uh, we're tracking this on a daily basis, but the inventory of gas turbine plants is growing about 6% per year. And the base will be over 2 million megawatts. And uh, 
And as far as the large gas turbine power plants will go, there's be 30,000 individual units, uh, which rut routinely require service. And uh, in addition to that, you've got hundreds of thousands of uh, stationary IC engines. And that doesn't obviously include all the off-road and the other, other things as well. So, you know, IIoT provides the delivery of comprehensive information about the operation and health of the individual components, can identify problems, and create new channels uh, to market in contrast to uh, sales directly to a single end user. So we, I think I'm going to skip through some of these, these numbers, but needless to say, uh, the devil's in the detail. And, you know, whether it's seals or pumps or valves or uh, selective catalytic uh, reduction systems, uh, you've, uh, you've got markets. And you've, on the SCR systems, you've got people like Yara, for instance, who provide a uh, complete uh, reagent management system so they can remotely uh, control the amount of, of urea that's being injected and also the inventory of urea measurement, how much is in the storage tanks and, and ship to uh, keep an, an optimum quantity on hand. The drivers obviously in, uh, are necessary to understand these drivers uh, in order to make the best sense and use out of the data that you that you get. And for instance, if your valves are corroding, it's imperative to know that uh, that uh, that accelerated flow accelerated corrosion is going to be a problem if you're cycling these gas turbines on a very frequent basis so you're going to have uh, uh, additional potential uh, maintenance problems with your valves and then obviously the regulatory drivers uh, all these things have to meet the uh, operational efficiency defined to include reaching your uh, pollution control goals. Now, one of the things that we've, uh, we've done is to come up with a uh, common metric to measure all harm and good. And so uh, you, for instance, on, on, uh, with a desalination plant, you're generating NOx and CO2 but you're purifying water. So at some point in time, you have to weigh what a ton of water is worth versus a ton of CO2 or a ton of NOx. And Europe has made some really bad decisions that they now regret. Uh, these, just this week, the smog in London was on the front pages and in Paris and Germany over the last few months. And essentially by choosing diesel engines with lower CO2 but higher uh, NOx and particulate emissions, they've created some substantial smog problems in a number of uh, European cities. Uh, the, um, the, certainly for the valve companies, you know, they're the foot soldiers of IIoT. So developing the smart valves is, is critical. And this means measuring on off valves as well as just the control valves. And Emerson's, uh, partnered with SEEK to improve the uh, data visualization tools to pre predict future valve problems and to employ uh, local fisher service experts, but also global valve experts uh, in order to uh, make improvements. And when it comes to the global valve experts, uh, we have spent the last 10 years gathering information on about on every valve application and every use and to, you know going into a pipeline to valve and determining you know the advantages of uh, trunnion versus floating and uh, all these different things so we bl believe there's things we can offer in this regard but if you're a valve supplier or if you're a filter supplier you know you're supplying uh, potentially to the large end users rather than to just an individual user and there could be fleet-wide systems you obviously are providing potentially to the gas turbine uh, supplier who then becomes an, an O&M uh, um, provider as well 
or a process for survive, uh, providers. So if you have a heat recovery uh, steam generator in the plant, you know, you may want with IIoT uh, to uh, be monitoring those R6, but also to provide uh, valve repair and other things. And then, of course, the automation uh, suppliers as well. And uh, the um, just taking an example, for instance, with uh, air filters, Donaldson has uh, got um, the uh, monitoring of filters on off-road vehicles and can predict uh, when they need to be repaired. Uh, the same is certainly uh, true or potentially true of filters and all these different applications. So th th it's already being done on the lubrication filters where you're both analyzing the pressure, you're analyzing the pressure drop across the filter, but also the temperature of the lubricant. Uh, so and understand whether it's the viscosity of the lubricant or it's the filter plugging. That's the problem. The um, support program that we're putting into, into place wants to uh, essentially find the best uh, solutions for all these different things in the O&M as well as in the uh, CapEx uh, aspects of gas turbines. And we do have decision systems uh, in this area. Um, so if this uh, basically uh, it, some of the information that the supplier needs certainly are what's going on in all these projects and um, the um, uh, you know most recent projects and where all these plants are and uh, and then to analyze you know who who you uh, who you should be pursuing and these are for instance, just new projects that have been announced in the last, uh, you know, that are underway right now. And you can see that there's 10 suppliers that account for each of which accounts for more than a thousand megawatts of new gas turbine projects underway. And a number of these uh, companies have between their coal and their uh, gas turbine and other um, power generation have 50,000 megawatts or more of power generation. Now in China, it's even more. It's, you know, it's uh, two or three times that for the largest uh, suppliers there in, in China. So anyway, pursuing a relatively small number of people is the, uh, is probably going to be the best uh, way to ensure success because they control the majority of the gas turbine uh, purchases. And the devil's in the detail. Uh, for Ber Berkshire Hathaway, again, we are tracking, uh, you know, activity at every plant along with the details. And ARG has a, a reliability um, benchmarking where they solicit uh, comments from the operators uh, uh, about each one of the components and it's a way to uh, augment the IIoT or the information about those components. But we believe that it's imperative that there be third party efforts to also provide not only which units or which types of products are installed at, in each one of these units, but uh, you know what vintage they are and what improvements have been made to the product since these were installed. So in other words, we need this expertise or what we call the industrial internet of wisdom from the suppliers of the, of the boiler feed water pumps or the SCR systems or the duct burners or, or whatever it is here. But all of it starts with gathering this basic information and including air permits and all sorts of different things. So um, the other thing is a lot of uh, new technologies coming into play like zero liquid discharge. And so this has to be taken into account in any kind of a, a system. So the, uh, the software that's being used here is very important. 
and IBM Maximo is being used by American Electric Power. ABB is very active uh, in this area with our Symphony family of control systems and more than 6,700 megawatts installed. Uh, Schneider Electric uh, is uh, got Invensys and they've also got all sorts of other things. We've been doing uh, webinars with them on uh, the Im improvement of uh, pump efficiency. So um, here's an interesting uh, company. Engie has got a number of different uh, initiatives going on. And one is uh, the dig digital transformation technology. And so uh, it's, it's investing a lot of money in this area. It also has Lab Laboralec, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But uh, it's moving forward in the IIoT uh, area here with this C3. And uh, as you can see here, uh, planning to have uh, a, a, a self-sustaining group of 100 experts that are knowledgeable just in analytics and data. But in addition to that, that they have a research organization that's actually getting into the weeds of air inlet filters, for instance, for gas turbines and which ones work and which ones don't and so forth. So um, this is the kind of thing that is going on. Um, I believe Rockwell is on the uh, line with us here today. And uh, they're involved in a number of, of different uh, things. We'll get into some of the other uh, automation uh, products that they have here. But one of the things is predictive uh, emission monitors. And um, they, they would basically be used to, instead of a, a SEMS, to predict uh, uh, NOx and to verify that the NOx levels that actually are emitted were not excessive. And um, we actually a, uh, did a study for Pavilion, who, who, who is the subsidiary of Rockwell who invented this PEMS uh, uh, system. And at the time, we recommended that it could be expanded to uh, utilize this common metric to measure all harm and good. So, you know, weigh NOx versus water versus all these different things. And so we do think that that is a, uh, a big opportunity. A third party OEM is another, um, you know, uh, I think what, what, what we essentially see here is that the IIoT uh, generates remote O&M, which generates a fleet uh, sourcing, which generates the need for more IIoT, which you know contributes to more IIOW, which then contributes to more and better IIoT. So it really is a chain uh, reaction there. And you've got people like Turbine Services who are providing uh, services for a number of different turbines and monitoring them. And, and the point being that, you know, you can have one common uh, system to measure all your turbines, not just the one supplied by Siemens or GE or whatever. And uh, in fact, uh, Duke on their wind, wind turbines just, uh, was being inundated with data from each individual wind turbine supplier. And uh, they went to Genpact, or I've forgotten whether, who, which of the suppliers it was for an open platform. And now they can look at all their uh, wind turbine performance on one in one system. Um, but you do have these third party uh, providers. Uh, and then Pro Energy is another uh, third party uh, provider. And uh, IHI uh, is a, a turbine supplier, uh, which has a, fl a flexible O&M services. And uh, you, m all the turbine manufacturers do have, serve, to some extent or another, are into this in a heav heavily uh, basis, as are many of the utilities. And NRG Energy, like Illuminate and so forth, uh, is, uh, is providing O&M services. Uh, to a large number of, uh, of industrial power plant uh, operators. 
and they just uh, got a new contract for several uh, uh, gas turbine uh, plants where they will do the O&M as, as well. And the Wood Group is moving beyond just the O&M to doing the proprietary software and consulting and has acquired Ingenius. Uh, and uh, so this is a recent step forward for a company that's been very in, involved in, in all of this. And the, uh, in terms of the remote uh, monitoring, uh, we're following companies like uh, MHPS who uh, took another step forward because they're doing coal-fired power plants as well as gas turbines out of their Philippine uh, location. And the reason they chose the Philippines was because uh, of the ability to hire English speakers uh, and the need to have English speakers for the Asian plants. And you got people like Nalco that are operating round the clock monitoring centers on water quality. Uh, so what we envision is, you know, these cloud systems and where you have a number of different suppliers on water quality, filters, rotating parts, pumps, valves, whatever, who are monitoring their own uh, valves and pumps, filters that are in place. But it's all being viewed by a third party operator and by the end user at the same time. And when problems occur with a valve or a pump, uh, you can have the wisdom of the process supplier, the end user, the third party operator, and the actual supplier of the component all to try to uh, solve the problem. So this is a big step forward with the with the cloud and the ability to all the all parties to view the uh, data at once. And the, uh, uh, the the big Siemens GE and so forth emphasize, you know, that the experiences that they're having with uh, all these different plants all over the world allow them to provide insights that nobody else can relative to the problem at an existing plant. Uh, I mentioned Eng Engi uh, a little bit earlier, but uh, they're they're doing uh, support consulting uh, for water quality intake filters, condition monitoring, and so forth in a number of different locations. So. You know, this is the marrying, really, of the IIoT with the IIOW, and which we believe uh, is the IIOW is even more important than the, than the IIoT. And in a way, one facilitates the other, but ultimately, it's the wisdom which, which uh, does the most good. And uh, Ethos Energy is another... Uh, company operating a monitoring and diagnostic center and does have predictive maintenance and combustion optimization and other uh, services. Uh, Siemens is obviously very involved in all this and we're, we've covered it in, in uh, all our different uh, segments here, so I'm not gonna say too much more there. And of course, GE is uh, spearheading uh, this whole IIoT uh, uh, initiative, or, or, or certainly came up with the the name to begin with, anyway. And uh, other uh, system suppliers like Unsaldo are providing uh, condition-based maintenance and diagnostics and uh, spare part management, decision re uh, support for problems, etc. And uh, IHI, uh, who we mentioned a few minutes ago. Uh, as its remote monitoring uh, activities that are per shown here. Uh, MH uh, Mitsubishi Heavy uh, Hitachi uh, Power Systems has uh, got their RMC uh, staff uh, heavily involved here. And then we get into the uh, individual suppliers. So you've got um, uh, Parker, for instance, who's very involved in on condition monitoring for gas turbines and you know measuring pressure, temperature, humidity at a number of different points, even at the uh, diverter damper uh, uh, lubrication systems and and so forth here. So 
the um, and then you've got individual company opportunities here. So the a company like Braden, I'll uh, just as an example, and we went into a number of them last week. But uh, by the way, last week we went into the market as a, a whole. And that particular uh, recording is available and up on the promotional part of our website, if you want to listen to that. Uh, these are being recorded and will be available as part of the IIoT and remote OM uh, package that we have. You know, even though the webinar, uh, you can listen to the webinar free like you're doing now, uh, the PowerPoints and the recording are part of the uh, package. But uh, so the question is going to be whether it's a Braden, whether it's a Accenture, whether it's a Siemens, whether it's uh, a SEMS provider like Thermo, but somebody is going to be taking uh, the larger part of the pie and the others are going to be working you know, with them. And uh, so you have these companies like Braden who are specialized just on gas turbines and they can maybe take it to the next level or maybe they are just a subcontractor to, to uh, uh, someone else. Uh, I mentioned uh, Berkshire Hathaway, and we're going to probably get into them in a way, but uh, in, in a minute. But uh, this is a company that's involved with uh, several hundred plants in the United States, plus a number of the different suppliers, and then they even have cloud-based services. So uh, this is a unique uh, uh, situation. Now let's uh, let's move on to the uh, engines, and um, as we said in the beginning, the ROI for IIoT and uh, the remote monitoring is even higher on the engines uh, for a number of different reasons. One, because they're uh, so dis dispersed, and basically the operators at the site if they are at a site uh, where there is an operator, are less uh, capable uh, than they would be, say, in a big gas uh, uh, turbine power plant with a 1,000 megawatts and all sorts of people around. But, uh, for instance, in the U.S., a lot of, the, of this activity is in the Midwest. The um, drivers certainly are uh, uh, for engines, gas engines in the U.S., are the low cost of natural gas, uh, and then you've got synthetic gas production. By the way, uh, we, we believe uh, the coal gasification, liquefaction uh, in China is going to continue to be a very large market, coal bed methane, et cetera. But then the uh, policies, uh, CO2 and otherwise, that are curtailing the use of coal-fired power. And of course, the reliability uh, that gas turbines bring to renewables such as wind. So the, um, uh, the, the, the factors favoring uh, stationary engines in power generation are the fact that that's a way to decentralize. And the uh, reasons that that is going to be more and more attractive is the higher relative cost of large centralized coal and gas turbine plants. Uh, the greater use of on-site power generation uh, at larger uh, power users, uh, and for instance, data centers are getting up to 400 megawatts of power for one data center. I mean, that's incredible. And uh, the potential to convert a data center from emergency power to standby power uh, is huge when you've got a 400 megawatt system there that could provide standby power, you certainly uh, uh, solve a lot of your uh, peak problems. Uh, the lack of transmission lines in developing countries is another reason. The availability of small scale LNG and, and virtual pipeline technologies, we did a six month study just on this and there's lots of areas in, in, the, uh, in the world. And then, uh, and then certainly uh, recent improvements in the operation and efficiency of, of reciprocating uh, engines. And uh, the, the fact that you're not going to be able to continue to uh, flare gas, you're going to have to uh, convert it. And if you convert it, uh, 
uh, and and use it on the site. A gas engine is is the way to do it. And then the biggest uh, uh, reason may be the higher efficiency of combined heat and power. That a combined heat and power plant can give you up to 90 percent. Uh, energy efficiency, and you come don't come close to close to that uh, with your gas turbines or any other uh, combined cycle or any other high efficiency uh, conventional fossil source. One of the surprising new developments is the fertilization effect of CO2 from gas engines. Uh, there are greenhouses all over the world now that are growing plants 40% faster because there is uh, CO2 being provided by a, um, a gas uh, engine. And uh, so we, we do think uh, that this is, just to give you an idea, the potential here, uh, the Empire State Building could theoretically grow enough wheat to supply all of uh, Manhattan with this fertilization effect and the artificial lighting on all the floors and so forth. So it's a huge uh, potential, particularly in the uh, developing countries. But we have gotten into the uh, age of gas and the um, the net use of gas is gonna be going up. Uh, shale gas and coal bed methane are interesting opportunities. The developing uh, countries are gonna have the greatest consumption the number of diesel engines, like even here in the United States a year, the number of new ones a year is very, very large. So obviously the IIoT for all of this is going to be uh, important. And uh, so GE has published a white paper and predicted uh, that distributed power and, and CHP are going to be huge. And in fact, they predict that even uh, just a few years from now, that uh, the annual investment will be $206 billion a year for distributed um, distributed power. So it's um, uh, certainly been heavily used in uh, in Europe, and but they're in the United States, uh, all sorts of potential uh, uses of it, as you can see in the chemical industry, refining industry, even commercial buildings healthcare, paper. So it is a, a big opportunity. And I think the IIoT uh, and IIOW remote monitoring is a big part, going to be a big part of all of making all that happen. And um, the potential uh, you know, uh, it, by size range has been analyzed. And the, you know, the existing uh, prime movers are, um, a com reciprocating engines is a relatively small portion of it, but I think they're going to be the biggest parts of, part of it in the in the future. The um, remote monitoring of compressor stations uh, with the Rockwell plant pack system as um, is an illustration of how complex all this is when you've got maybe five or six hundred different compressors all stretched out at 40 mile intervals across you know 8200 miles of transmission pipelines so you've got to be measuring you know the temperature and and other uh, parameters here and uh, in this case there was a legacy automation system that was completely inadequate and uh, so the uh, rockwell system has uh, was installed and is operating uh, quite well and um, without going into some of those details there, the engine suppliers are heavily in, involved in, in all this, as you can see here. And you've got, uh, uh, this is the word Scylla information, and they've got conditioning monitors and condition-based maintenance and dynamic maintenance planning. And uh, I won't go into that whole cycle, except, uh, uh, to say here on, on condition-based uh, maintenance that they start with the customer installation, the operational data, the analysis of it. Then they do get into the expert analysis the, and the frequent uh, reporting. 
And, you know, the health is determined by a number of uh, uh, parameters here. And um, the various engine suppliers have whole initiatives based on supplying the complete greenhouse uh, uh, system. Uh, Cummins is, uh, is one of them. Um, so basically, they have to figure out uh, well, how much of the CO2 to put into the, the greenhouse itself. And then they have these, uh, these systems. So you've got uh, a whole bunch of different things going on that have to be uh, controlled. And people like Clark Energy are supplying uh, systems in this, in this regard as well. And you can see uh, uh, the heat exchangers and catalytic converters and measuring the exhaust gas and the amount of CO2 that goes into the greenhouse and so forth. So uh, biogas is another big opportunity uh, and they're making some uh, improvements. They've figured out ways to get siloxanes out of the uh, gas that's gonna be burned. And this is a big step uh, forward here. So landfills and, and wastewater plants and others are another, uh, another opportunity here. So that, uh, that really uh, takes care of, the, uh, is of this slide presentation. And what I wanted to do next was to show you this allied uh, reliability um, article. And um, uh, this is our next uh, industrial IOT and remote O&M newsletter. Uh, the February one has about 36 pages of, of articles in it. Just came out, but this is the uh, the next one. But um, you know they have condition monitoring, and they also have uh, reliability uh, bench benchmarking. And um, Preston, were you able to join us this morning? Yeah, Preston Johnson uh, of Allied. Uh, signed up for the meeting and I, I know wanted to join us. I'm not sure that he has, uh, but if you have Preston, be sure to, uh, to chime in. But I think what's important here is that they have these web-based programs where users uh, complete individual assessments uh, at their own pace. And these assessments, uh, then are uh, used to, to make decisions on uh, on improvements, and what we're really saying with with this sort of a concept is you can take this concept of of, of one program using the uh, assessments from one from the actual users and expand it to all the suppliers as well, and so. In many cases, the suppliers will say, "Okay, you know, the reason this we're getting you're getting this kind of performance from this kind of a, a situation is because of the situation itself. You're you're using air cooled condensers instead of uh, water based cooling, and you're getting a lot of uh, particulates in the condensate water, and that's why you're having the problem." So. The having the ability of the well, the, put, put it another way, to the extent that the supplier is empowered with the information about how the his product is being used and what people think about it, gives him the insights a maybe to straighten them out if if, if uh, there's some faulty thinking, but b to take that information and make a better product. So uh, I think essentially what we're saying here is you're going to have hundreds of thousands of white papers, so to speak, generated by the IIoT and, uh, and converting that to IIOW means operating on the on that data. Uh, the IIOW converts that data to a meaningful white paper. Essentially, this is why this particular product is doing better. And um, so I think that um, uh, there, there's a huge need for organization of of all this kind of information. Uh, so with that, I'm actually going to show you uh, a little bit of, uh, of how we're doing it. We've got a few minutes uh, left here. 
And but before I do that, I'd like to open it up for questions. Are there questions at this point before we we move on here? If not, um, so we have this website for uh, Berkshire Hathaway, and we have you know, all their different plants. So you can go to and click on you know all their gas turbine plants, and then you click on these like this Chuck Lindsay plant that we did click on before, and you see you know the status of that plant and the products and so forth there. But um, the uh, but here's what I was was talking about uh, here with the um, benchmarking, the uh, reliability, and so forth. There, it's gathering all this data about each one of these plants. And here was alert number one uh, when we started this program, and as part of a biweekly uh, alert here, and uh, so in this particular case, um, they got into uh, some problems with their condensate filters. And uh, so we'll go down to that particular article there. And then this was the Knox Control Project. Um, uh, Siemens, GE, um, Emerson all made presentations. We held had nine hours of webinars to make decisions relative to uh, a potential $700 million SCR uh, project. But with combustion optimization modifications, SNCR, and with a novel uh, mix of urea and H2O2, hydrogen peroxide, induct SCR, and then the use of ozone in the uh, scrubber, which, by the way, is coming from the refining industry. There's the opportunity now that to meet the NOx levels that are required in Utah without SCR. So instead of 700 million, they might be able to get by for half that or less. And I think the people involved all would agree that it was the the wise crowd. Uh, uh, and, and Andrews, as a matter of fact, of Pacific Corp even came up with that observation that it really was a wise crowd because we had some uh, contributions from unexpected uh, uh, sources, a uh, retired uh, individual, for instance, that had been involved previously for some with some research at Pacific Corp, and nobody uh, had remembered it, but it was very, very, very valuable. So um, then, but, you know, you've got to take into account what new things might be uh, uh, happening. And certainly when you get sued for water contamination at some of these plants, that's important information for uh, the vendors as well as for the owner. And then you get, uh, but you get all sorts of really good, uh, uh, insightful documents. And um, this is a, uh, a document, it was a presentation at a conference that gets into very detailed information as to why the condensate filters uh, needed to be replaced. And so potentially there are these condensate filters at 200 plants that will benefit from what was learned about this, this one plant. Uh, the other thing is you've got to systematically make available to those people who need it the um, the information about the potential, you know, if you if, in this case, they have had consultants do a lot of studies for them, and there's all sorts of uh, things that they can do to improve uh, performance. But if the suppliers of VFD and the pumps are exposed to that information, uh, they can maybe provide the the insights. The same thing on the forced draft fans and VFD controls there uh, as well. And then uh, you've got uh, uh, some um, you know, various different software that's being used there and try to understand uh, you know, a lot of those different things yeah, uh, is, uh, is helpful. So gathering all this information about each plant is an ongoing 
of value. Here is the uh, the current creek plant, and the um, uh, as you can see here, here is a uh, uh, duct that goes from the com combustion turbine over to the tomato uh, processing facility. And again, you get tomatoes growing 40% uh, percent faster. There's 22 million pounds of tomatoes being grown a year. And Howlings, who's the owner, is putting up these plants all over the Western US and uh, Canada, but most of them are using uh, gas engines rather than the uh, than part of the uh, exhaust from the combined cycle plants. Uh, here's a picture of the of the tomato facility itself. And in terms of IIoT and so forth, they're actually using condensate uh, in in some unique ways. It's a desert type area there to um, gather additional water. So again, you've got uh, uh, things going on here, such as the uh, uh, um, energy, other energy projects and things that are going on there. Uh, the other thing I want to do is to just quickly show you the, and by the way, were, were there any questions on that uh, as well? So this is the IIoT uh, uh, service here, and it's got a, a lot of aspects to it. But for instance, this is the uh, February issue of the newsletter, uh, which gets into water aspects, gas turbine aspects, clean rooms, and uh, a lot of market information. So this is a 36 uh, a page uh, ar article uh, there. And the um, uh, so you've got <clears throat> uh, another aspect of that, of course, is these, these um, um, PowerPoints that were each week we're going to be doing another one, and so this wastewater uh, PowerPoint three or four weeks from now will be 70 or 80 slides like this one was rather than just uh, a limited uh, number. So uh, so we plan uh, uh, to do these on a, uh, a weekly uh, basis. And then the uh, the last thing here too is, we do have the um, uh, intelligence system, and you can actually go in. If you go in here, starting with the most recent, um, you see uh, any of the uh, papers and things that uh, that are uh, in the program as well. So, uh, so I think this covers uh, a lot of the basics here uh, this morning, and I would open it up. Uh, invite any questions that anybody uh, might have so do we have any uh, any questions from the from the floor here yeah so that being the case i'd like to thank people this morning for for joining us and uh, the recording will be in the uh, in the database and system and so i thank you very much and this is bob McElvain signing off for today